we have our first hearing in the state of Florida, and the judge makes a ruling. The ACC lawsuits are always in the news, so we're back on the big mountain to break it down for you. Hey, welcome back to the mountain. I am JY, and this is my good friend, Steve. Steve, we finally get to do an episode on a hearing in Florida. We did several on the hearing in North Carolina, actually some on the hearing and then some uh, on the written order from the judge. Um, but this judge determines he's gonna rule from the bench. Yeah. So, um, and he did just that. Mm -hmm. He also said, there's too much here and we have to continue this for another day. Yes, yes. Um, and we'll get to that as well. But, um, you know, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If, if you've been here before, which most of you probably have, welcome back. I know we dropped an, an episode on Wednesday that was about the North Carolina motion to seal. We got some people wondering, hey guys, what's going on with the Florida case? Well, here we go. We finally are recording. Just as a reminder, we only record twice a week, yeah. hopefully, if we can even get it at that. And so our things are sometimes a little bit delayed, and it's not that we're swaying one side or the other, it's just we have lives. We have day jobs, so this yeah. is just for fun. So It's supposed to be for fun. Yeah. This is starting to feel like a job, but I'm still having fun just <laughs> yes. because you're beside me, Steve. Right. So Anyway, it. without getting too mushy here, on April 9th, we had our first hearing in Florida. This was on the ACC's motion to dismiss or stay the FSU action in Leon County, and this was this was with Judge Cooper. I hope I can keep all these names figured out. We got Bledsoe in North Carolina. Yep. We got Cooper here in Leon County, Florida. Um, I know right now, right, especially yesterday uh, or Tuesday, um, our FS, FSU fans are celebrating. They got some good news. They didn't get a whole lot of good news uh, from North Carolina o overall. Not, not good news for them. They got a lot of great news uh, in terms of what the judge both said and ruled. Uh, and he's not done ruling yet. Um, and really was just a complete 180, almost everything. A complete 180 from what we heard in North Carolina uh, just a few weeks ago. So Cooper denied the motion to stay in Florida. That was the ruling that he did do uh, on the 9th, that he's denying the motion to stay. He wants to hear this. He did not rule on the motion to dismiss or on the whole uh, stay of discovery, discovery right. um, and some other things that he wants to get into. But those are the two the two big items that he didn't really rule on. I did kind of find it interesting, Steve, that um, that he went with the stay first and not the dismissal. And, and we're going to get into this. I'll throw it to you here okay. in a minute. Maybe you can start with that. Because Steve actually listened to almost this whole entire thing. It yep. was live streamed and I'll cut out a few times, yep. but overall it was live streamed. I unfortunately was busy doing my day job yes. for most of the day uh, and was not able to. I did catch up on some of this. I was actually able to hear uh, the last time they came back, which I think was at like 3.30. Uh, I was able to hear the ending, so I, I got to hear his, his actual ruling and, and some of the things that he said. But because they only got to the one, uh, one uh, ruling, they're going to have another hearing or they're going to come back on April 22nd um, and continue the discussion, again, on the motion to dismiss, the motion to stay discovery, and also rightness. He mentioned several things. He wants to get more into rightness of, of all of this, which I think is more about the motion to dismiss, maybe? Yes. I don't know. Yep. Um, so, again, you listen to most of this. I'm going to let you drive the cart here for a while. I'll chime in with, with some of the things that I was able to glean off of reading some some Twitter posts and some other reporting on this, but you heard it verbatim. So go for it, Steve. Yeah, I was fortunately I was able to pretty much either watch or listen to the entire thing. There were some times when the feed went out, and I was I, but I was following along with some local reporters, yeah. some Tampa reporters, and some Tallahassee reporters on Twitter um, when you know when the feed was out. But I was able to listen to the whole thing. I don't have a full transcript. A lot of times we really like to take a deep dive into yeah. everything was said. Uh, we don't have that, but but I took notes as, as I was watching and listening. And so I want to go over those of the things that really jumped out at me. Okay. Um, so first of all, I'll say I, I agree with you about it. Everything's a 180. This was like mirror world, okay? <laughs> which, which, again, did not surprise me because for those people who have watched all of our videos from the beginning of this, uh, you know, I said from the beginning, there's a very good chance that a North Carolina judge and a Florida judge are going to have completely different perspectives right. on this. There's there's different uh, uh, you know different case law as precedent in each state. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyways, it just it did not surprise me at all. But uh, but yes, a complete 180. Um, and what I'll say is, I, you know, I was trying to get the 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 video is from the back of the courtroom, so you're seeing the right. back of the of the heads 
of the attorneys. I'm pretty sure the ACC attorney was the same attorney. It was Cooney. It was Cooney, yep. yes, uh, from from the North Carolina hearing. And yep. we talked about how he was so comfortable in Judge Bledsoe's uh, courtroom. He yep. knew what Judge Bledsoe wanted, how he likes his pillow fluffed and everything. <laughs> um, and he was completely comfortable. And in this hearing, he, he definitely seemed uh, way less comfortable. Mm. Um, you know, there were times where, and, and I'll get into that a little bit, there were times where he kept trying to go back and cite North Carolina law, and, and Judge Cooper would get kind of annoyed, wave him off, and say, I'm interested in Florida law here. Yeah, well, um, so, as he would be. Right, which I think just kind of it, it threw uh, Cooney off a bit. He just was not as comfortable in this forum. Um, the, the attorney for Florida State, I don't remember seeing him. I think they used a couple different attorneys okay. in in North Carolina. This guy, he looked and sounded different. I didn't catch his name. Uh, but, boy, he total different world than the performance that the Florida State attorney had in North Carolina. This guy was confident. He knew Florida law. He knew the precedents. I mean, he was just boom, 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 point, 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 hammering away. Very confident. So, to, you know, you could just tell it, it was like a complete flip-flop. Sure. Um, okay. Which makes sense, you know, one side being more comfortable in one venue than the other. Right. Um, so, I, w- I want to get into some points that just jumped out at me. First of all, and some of this will be a little bit of a repeating what you just said, sure, but, yeah. but I wanted to just kind of talk about it as it as it came out. Yeah. Um, so, right away, Judge Cooper says he wants to hear everything today, which the hearing was only scheduled an hour and a half. Right. But he said, we have all day, and my yeah, schedule okay. is cleared. Okay. I want, he says, I want to hear everything today, and I like to make rulings on the same day. So, his intention right out of the bat was to get to each one of the... The motions and have a, a ruling right from the bench, I, and that surprised me. I mean, uh, that that he decided that, and that that's probably what he does. You know, judges are comfortable in in ruling from the bench or not. Right. I, I would assume that's probably his mo, which is fine. I'm not judging him for yeah. that. But um, it was interesting that he kind of said right up front, "We're going to hear this, and you're going to get answers." And I yeah. went, "Oh, holy cow! We better get ready for some episodes." I was surprised <laughs> as well, and I, I mean, it bumped up the excitement level. Sure, I think, a little bit. Like, yeah. "Oh, we're going to get a ruling." So. Yeah. Anyways, and the next thing that he ba- he said was basically that he had not even read the ruling. He, he was aware through the media of what had happened in North Carolina. Right. But he had not read the ruling, and he didn't want anything, any of the arguments that had been made there under North Carolina law to taint his view. Um, and he said he takes seriously that he fought in that courtroom. Um, you know, it is a Florida court, mm-hmm. and that they take, and he takes seriously to follow the precedents of Florida law as it has been. Uh, determined in the state of Florida. So right out of the bat, he was kind of setting the stage there. Um, okay, so the the ACC lawyer started first, um, and you know he was going through. And and again, uh, another difference. There was some discussion in Judge Bledsoe's court, but this was more like a conversation the whole whole time, okay. back and forth conversation. Uh, and right away out of the gate, the the judge basically says, you know. Um, you asked the ACC attorney, hey, you filed the day before. In my view, and, and in Florida courts, we view that as a form of uh, uh, forum, yeah, forum shopping. shopping. Right. Um, basically, the rush to the court. Right. Um, you know, do you have any counter argument to that? Uh, so it kind of threw the ACC attorney off right away. He okay. was saying, because, and, and we'll get to that later, their main thing was they felt they felt like they won the race to the court, so they, they had priority. Um, and he, and he was basically kind of swatting that away from the beginning and, and, and making it a negative. Um, so, so that kind of set the tone there early. Um, and then, and then he goes right to, as the ACC lawyer is making other arguments, Judge Cooper wanted to dig in on, um, the, um, basically the public, the, the contract, you know, what the, the grant of rights, the, the contract, all the different contracts, the differences between the two. And he says plainly with, with some skepticism, he said, please explain to me how it's possible that a contract which governs Florida state university, which is a, a public entity, it it is part of the public, Mm -hmm. um, is, is completely secret, uh, when, when we have such strong, uh, public record laws in Florida and, and basically gave the ACC lawyer a, a chance to uh, argue that. But you could tell right away from his perspective, um, it, it was going to be a rough, rough uh, road to hoe there. Um, so but you knew you, uh, they had to know that was coming. 
I think they did, but again, it was just it, it, the same thing that we saw in North Carolina where one lawyer is more comfortable in a venue with a certain judge than the other, and and I think it just kind of knocked him off of his game, the way the judge asked it. Okay. but I, Yeah, so okay. we'll, we'll, we'll come back to I'm that. I'm anxious to go back and see yeah. that because I would think there was two or three things I would think the ACC is ready to answer with a very – detailed, articulate response, and I would think the Florida Sunshine Laws question would have been one of those. So uh, that's shocking to me to hear Cooney fumble that. Maybe. I don't know. I'll let, I'll let you go, Steve. Yeah, so the, well, and so what the, basically what his argument was is that he understands uh, Florida public record, and, and I'll tell you the word Sunshine Laws were never mentioned in okay, court, okay. So, which was interesting. All so public record pu- laws. Public yeah. record laws and public meeting laws. Yeah, okay. So basically his argument was he understands how strong the Florida public record laws are, and that basically anything is supposed to be, if if it's uh, of public value and it can affect the public taxpayer, it's supposed to be uh, transparent. Sure. However, basically he made that same argument of the trade secrets, okay. that the I, trade secrets could still be protected, but he just didn't come across as strong, because okay. I think he knew he was speaking to a more skeptical audience, whereas... <laughs> Uh, Judge, he, he, you know, compared to Judge Bledsoe, you okay. could you could just tell there was a okay. there was a different vibe from this okay. attorney okay. for sure. Um, so yeah, that you know they got into that with the trade secrets. The ACC lawyer basically just making that argument that trade secrets could still be protected. Uh, he wasn't as strong and definitive. It wasn't a must be be um, uh, protected, but that they could still be protected if there was an interest there. Hmm. So it, it was definitely interesting. That is, it. I find that extremely interesting. Like I said, I'm anxious to go back and take a look yeah. at that because yep. um, that that was a swing and a miss. If that, in, in my opinion, like if that's what, how the ACC uh, kind of uh, responded to that question without being, you know sure necessarily you're being well maybe you can do this because i I, the the parts that i heard from the judge Mm -hmm. he was very he he always told you what he thought and then he told you why he thought it instead of setting up his his thinking it was here's my thinking and here's why i think that way right so i i get i didn't hear this part but the parts that i did hear that makes sense that's what i saw from the judge yeah and and i think that confidence matter comes to we talked about this in the in many episodes uh, I mean, the ACC would prefer to have this case in North Carolina. They know that North Carolina laws and North Carolina precedents yeah. help those arguments. The business court in, in the business court, the arguments of trade secrets, and they know they're at a little bit of a disadvantage in the in Florida courts with their whether the laws are different or stronger, but the how they've been interpreted sure. over the years. So, yeah. so moving forward again, somewhere in there, the judge he he talks about like. He kept coming back to forum shopping over and over in between, and and he said, "I apologize because a lot of these arguments are so connected." Yeah. So as the as the ACC lawyer was talking about trade secrets and this and that, he came back to uh, forum shopping and said, "Well, basically, from what you're saying, it sounds like again uh, that you, you know because of the Florida laws right. and these public record laws, you were forum shopping and you rushed to the courthouse." This is just another kind of uh, notch in the wall saying that you were forum shopping. So okay. came back to that again. So then, as the again, as the AC, ACC attorney gets going, making his arguments again, and the judge interrupts him and he says, so what you're saying is Florida State could just leave the conference at any time mm-hmm. and pay $130 million. And the ACC lawyer it kind of you know got him off his game again, and he said, well, yeah, they could pay between 130 to $140 million. Right. And then we would still... Um, retain the rights to those future games. And right. I think that's the, the, the judge really, uh, and, and you and I were texting, he really wanted to get to the nitty gritty of how much did they have to pay to leave right now, which I was a little surprised at that, that, that he was kind of digging in that in a For preliminary a hearing stay, like right, this, yeah, yeah. which... I, I speculated to you while we were texting is I think he's setting this up for mediation. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. thinking, hey, is this can I get them to mediation on this? Are they close on this? Um, but that and that really kind of opened the door then to the okay, you have to pay a certain amount and then still the um, the ACC would still own those games. okay. There was a lot of discussion then at that point those are why why are they? Florida property right. um, because they're in the state of Florida, their home games, back and forth with that. 
Okay, then the ju- then as the ACC lawyer is, is again making his case, the judge interrupts him and asks about the Clemson case. Uh, again, to talk about for- forum shopping. Okay. <laughs> and he's, he, he asked basically, what's the difference between your case and the Clemson case? And uh, why, in this case, were you able to file one day before yes. and with Clemson you weren't? And so the, the lawyer starts to ask and then judge basically says, okay, from what you're saying, I, well, my understanding is uh, in, in Florida... Because they had to, because of the Florida public meetings law, where they had to go and vote on it, it was public. It was put out the agenda. Basically, gave you an opportunity to file quickly the day before. And in, in Clemson case, you did not get that opportunity. You didn't know that they were going to file. They didn't have to be so public about it, so you weren't able to do it. And again, he said, so that shows me again that you are forum shopping, rushing the courthouse. So. Um, almost every argument that the that the ACC attorney was making, the judge was bringing it back to that forum shopping, uh, and and so uh, basically the ACC lawyer concluded his conclusion. I'm paraphrasing slightly, but when he was done, his uh, the, the the question of priority because that was yes. really the big question. Yes, he said simply, the, the, it's a simple matter. We filed first, so we get to go first. Yes, which that worked beautifully for him in North Carolina. But with this judge, he's already basically saying, like, I think you forum shopped, and the evidence is it's because you filed one day before them, and you're just confirming it for me. And you texted me that, and I wrote, I wrote it down here. That, that was the one text you sent me. He ended his argument. The ACC, Attorney Cooney, ended his argument, we served first. Yes. Which, to your, you said it earlier, it's actually a negative for this judge, for this judge. because... You were forum shopping, and right. we're going to get into that more uh, when we get to his actual ruling on this and his his opinions behind it. And some of that's going to be repetitive. It sounds like he he repe- I don't say he repeated himself um, saying the same things, but bring always bringing it back was back repeating back. himself. But it was building that case for him why he eventually ruled to to not stay or denied the stay of the of the. Uh, motion here and at one point the um the judge cooper specifically and i don't remember exactly where it was because he kept going back to forum shopping he he, you know he explicitly said hey we the the rush to the courthouse is a that's a textbook uh um uh strategic move mm-hmm. to forum shop mm-hmm. and he said we frown upon that in in this court or in these courts and I, I i didn't know if he meant just in his courtroom or if he meant in all of florida courts i wasn't yeah. sure on that but he kind of hammered that home again so that he was comes back to that and basically says it in every court well there you go because he lists a whole we'll get to that okay he, in his ruling he lists uh, uh, well, lots of, I, yeah. you keep going, yes. Steve. <laughs> okay. So by at this point, we've already had a break where we, uh, I think at this point we've gone to lunch. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, we've blown through the hour and a half time. It's been, I mean, a lot of time, which is mostly discussion, back and forth discussion mm-hmm. between the ACC attorney and the judge. So now the FSU lawyer comes out. I would say he, he probably spoke, his time was probably half. Um, you know, I wasn't timing it and, you know, it was a long day throughout this. So yeah. I would say he probably spoke about half the amount of time as the, um, ACC lawyer. Um, and basically he comes out, he makes his arguments. He talks about the different briefs. He makes some points. He makes, again, very strong points about, um, you know, sovereign immunity, about forum shopping, uh, he also made some other points that I don't think the judge was that interested in okay. as far as the um, the the voting, um, you know, did they vote to approve the motion? There was a little bit back and forth, but the judge didn't have a lot of follow-up questions. To me, it seemed like he just was not that interested. Now, we'll see as the case goes on. Maybe right. when he goes to the motion to dismiss, yeah. he gets into that a little bit more. But in this case, he just didn't really seem that interested in whether or not they had enough votes. I mean, it was definitely discussed, but it wasn't. As, as as nearly as big of a deal. Um, so after, as the the Florida State Attorney is making his arguments, finally the judge is like, "Okay, okay, let me let me sum it up. I think I can sum up your entire case." And, <laughs> and he says, "So point one of yours is about the taking of property, um, the the taking of property owned by a Florida public entity." Um, and there was a lot of back and forth di- about the the games, where the games are held. Uh, he asked both attorneys, so. If Florida State has a home game, but it's not in the state of Florida, it's in the state of Georgia, mm-hmm. is that still considered Florida public property? And they said yes, because it has value to 
Florida State University, which is a public entity. Um, so that was his point one, is, it, you know, as his understanding of FSU's case was the taking of property owned by uh, Florida public entity. Um, and, and point two it, of your case, of your argument, is that North Carolina can't decide if Florida waives sovereign immunity um, or Florida state waives sovereign immunity. That can only be decided because it's a Florida state law that can only be decided either in the state of Florida or they talked about a few cases in the Supreme Court in South Carolina. I want to go back and research some of these other cases yeah, okay. at some point before the next hearing uh, where there was a similar matter in the state of South Carolina. It went up to a federal court. Um, but basically, he said, so you're you're arguing that North Carolina is not the proper venue. It has to be heard in Florida um, because of sovereign immunity. And, and the, the FSU attorney agreed to that. Um, and then the last part was the public record and meetings laws. Uh, so the public record laws were, that was very obvious, the point he was trying to make, basically that all of this stuff is open. Uh, it's it's that the Florida public record laws are clear that because, and, and the judge talked about, he said, I understand how Florida, Florida State is funded by the by the legislature in florida yeah. so and you, you you know and he said you can't separate dollars you don't know this dollar to that dollar mo money moves around basically any money that is owed to or paid by florida state is considered public money mm -hmm. um and so you know that they were talking about that with public records now they did get more into the public meaning laws and that was that was interesting um they you know he asked him about the the whole so like separating the florida state board of trustees yeah which is more of a governing body over the university mm -hmm. um and was asking him specific questions about how the board of trustees has to operate and are they governed by public uh florida public meeting laws and um the florida state authority said yes they are you know they have to do things a certain way they have no other choice okay and th and they they talked mm -hmm. about briefly not not real in depth about the um the basically the fact that the board of, in order for any contract to be valid in the state of florida mm -hmm. it would have to be voted on by the florida board of trustees that's what the florida state or, uh, lawyer was arguing the judge seemed pretty receptive to that based on the public meeting laws um so that was kind of interesting and so the judge was like okay do you have anything else and and the and the the Florida State Attorney was like, well, you know, we have some other things and just brought up a couple smaller things that the yeah. judge did not seem that interested in, okay. but said, yeah, that's basically, that's the gist of our case okay. is the taking of um, public property in Florida, uh, which is the games and then the, the value of those games, um, the, the, the uh, subject of sovereign immunity. Mm. Um, the, I will say the judge, the, the, both attorneys and the judge really did not get into that question. It was completely different than in North Carolina about the all courts or whatever. The judge simply said, okay, there, there's clear history in the state of Florida of okay. what we mean. And I don't really care if it says all courts or courts in okay. here. Okay. In Florida, he said, what I understand. Oh, and, and so then this kind of gets to my next point. The judge made a big point of saying in Florida, it's very clear for, um, uh, sovereign immunity laws that sovereign immunity must be explicitly waived. So basically in, in, in any contract or an agreement, you have to explicitly waive sovereign immunity in that contract. And that it, he said, there's, there's precedent in Florida that it cannot be implicitly waived. Okay. Basically you can't give someone else, uh, the ability to waive your sovereign immunity. Uh, and the judge, that really wasn't an argument from either side. The judge basically just said that is established. Uh, he said, it's my understanding that that's established in Florida uh, law. And if you, either one of you have cases that, that either agree with that, or maybe you have something that's contrary that I don't right. know, you can bring it to me, but that's what my understanding of Florida law. Um, so that was, a, I thought that was a big point in the case, a big uh, point that he made, which was again, completely different yeah. than how things went down in North Carolina. Um, and then uh, somewhere in those arguments, um, the judge basically said it was pr very clear to him that the state of Florida has a major interest in the public property being taken away, which is those games and the value of the, those games. Um, you know, he, he, and again, he said, if, if either of you has other cases that show where public property in the state of Florida was taken, 
um, by rule of another court, another state, please bring that to me, or even in a federal court. But he listed some other cases, and he said, basically, if you look at the, you know, these other cases, it's very clear that this should be um, at least uh, move forward in the state of Florida because the state has such a major interest in their public property. Okay. Um, I'm going to end there. I have a couple other things that kind of... You know, he didn't have like a, a, a delineation line between the end of the arguments and the ruling. He just yeah. kind of started to roll right into the cases and the ruling. So I'm going to let you take over and well, I'll see if there's anything. Let, I me, let me ask you a couple things yeah. and then I'll get into kind of where he ruled at the end, uh, at least on the stay. So the first thing, and you kind of mentioned it, you mentioned the all courts and the sue or be sued. Mm -hmm. uh, again, to, to that whole sovereign immunity piece that played. I thought it sounded like it played well, at least with the North Carolina judge. I get it. That's a North Carolina judge that doesn't know or need to understand and follow Florida law. I right. get that. Um, and my, so my question was going to be, did that come up much? And you kind of answered it with like, it didn't come up because the judge, this judge is saying, I already know the answer to that. And you mentioned it with explicit waiving, uh, not implicit, but explicit waiving sovereign immunity. And also the definition of all courts. Yeah. So uh, it sounded like maybe that didn't get a lot of play just because obviously we're in a Florida court here, so it's not really a question right. in Florida like it would be in North Carolina. They did bring it up briefly. I think the Florida state attorney actually brought it up and said and he brought up a lot of things that were in the ruling, in the North Carolina ruling, okay. which I don't know if the judge really liked because he was trying to keep that separate. Right. But the Florida state attorney brought up a, a few things like that about the sue to be sued, and that was basically when... I believe that's when Judge Cooper uh, interrupted him and said, well, look, my understanding of okay. Florida law is it has to be explicitly waived. Uh, sovereign immunity has to be explicitly waived, and you have to show that it was explicitly waived. So just not not really a talking point for him. Like he, he had, And we saw that in North Carolina. Yeah. If the judge wanted to talk about right. it and hear more about he it, went, we're going to talk a hell of yes. a lot more about it. Yep. If he doesn't want to hear about it, you're probably not going to talk about Same it. Same so. thing here, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you a question. So... You mentioned, you sent me a text that said you, you felt like they talked about 40% was on public uh, record laws, yes, Florida public record laws. 40% was about, like you mentioned, the um, what would it cost for the ACC to yes. get out? A lot of discussion on uh, the cost and how do they get out and blah, 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 blah. So it's 80% of, of it yep. and then 20% kind of on everything else. You know, again, high level, but really focus on those two pieces. So yes. my question is, for this hearing which was on dismissal and stay mm -hmm. why wh what was the whole reasoning behind having so much conversation about the florida public record laws i don't know i don't understand and without hearing the hearing it i don't i don't have that um understanding why were they so focused on that here well some of I it mean, i know we have always been focused on it yeah. our commenters love to talk about it i just don't know how it connects to the motion to stay or dismiss that's my i don't understand how that connects i think some of it a lot of it was so they talked about it was kind of interchangeable the public record laws and public meeting laws so sometimes they would say public record laws sometimes public meeting laws and sometimes they were, they were talking about both and, and so a lot of it was they were talking about how florida state had to um, had to do that public vote okay. on suing, which okay. then gave the ACC the opportunity to get there. So it got first. back to the priority piece. That was like you said, priority. he kept coming back to the forum yeah. or the, the priority piece and shopping forum and all. That was a big okay. part, and there was, and I, and I and I and I wasn't really clear why, because sometimes there there was garbled and broken up. There was a lot of talk about the records and those records, um, whether like keeping them secret. Um, and so I'm not sure exactly where they were going with that okay. and why they were talking about it, but they did talk significantly about the records and being secret. And he asked, and the ACC talked about the trade secrets. Right. And all okay. That. Okay. All right. Okay. Makes sense. I mean, they're going to get there eventually. I just, I, and I, I was a little confused I, why it took, got so much play in the yeah. hearings. Are you going to ask me about the numbers? What or did you already ask me? Right. The other 40%, they talked a lot about the numbers. Oh, yeah. No, I don't care about that. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that that I understand a little bit more, uh, I think. And and I think you made a really good point, and we're going to get to it at the end here, the whole mediation yeah. issue. Let's get some things on the table, um, although we've already known what the ACC has been saying in regard to this with some of their um, briefs and things. But let, let's get these things on the record and... and, and Get you guys to talk about this, if not to each other, to me, and and get that communication going. And can I say, it was very strange. We talk about how negotiations start and how the different sides are far apart. Yeah. And and, and maybe I'm just not under, because I'm not a lawyer, I'm not understanding the legal strategy here. Yeah. The FSU lawyers kept talking about that 
five hundred million dollars, four hundred million, five hundred, six hundred million. Okay. I guess just to show how much jeopardy Florida State was in. Okay. Whereas the ACC lawyer kept going. Well, they can pay one hundred thirty million and walk away at any time. So the ACC lawyer was kind of downplaying the numbers, and the Florida State lawyer was kind of yes, right. which I thought was interesting. I was a little okay. confused at first, but I think that's why they were doing it. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, the only other thing I want to point out is apparently the the January twelfth vote came up in part of this and it was said that 12 members were present at that vote and Clemson was invited yes. but did not attend that vote so uh, that was one piece that I saw people had some some tweets on that I, I thought was interesting uh, that Clemson was was invited but didn't attend it did, that vote came up and, and yes about Clemson not attending and I think the the judge may have asked about um, or maybe the Florida State attorney uh, argued but there was a some discussion of um, well, are there minutes for that meeting? Do we know how everyone voted? Yes. Um, because this is affecting a, a huge amount of money for a public entity in Florida. Um, you know, shouldn't that, you know, how the vote happened and the minutes of that vote be made public? That was discussed, I mean, probably for only five or ten minutes. But by it was the ACC? I, or by FSU? I or? think maybe the FSU lawyer kind of brought something up and then the judge was asking about it. I, I can't remember because I didn't take notes on that well, part. I'm bit. glad you bring that up because I actually saw the same comment on somebody uh, that was looking for information regarding UNC and a board of trustees meeting mm -hmm. with UNC and they asked for minutes. And I appreciate you bringing it up because I want to just give a little more flavor to this. I am in the public realm mm -hmm. in, in my day job. Minutes don't come out and are not approved until the following meeting. So uh, I'm not trying to uh, be uh, on, on the side of the ACC right now. I'm just saying when, when people request minutes I, at my job, the, the day after the, or the week after a public meeting, there are no minutes yet right. because they're still being um, typed up and they're not finalized until they're reviewed at the next meeting and approved at the next meeting. Right. And then they become the public document. Yeah. So I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I see this a lot. People that don't deal in public entities, they don't understand what that means. Why don't you have minutes the next day? Right. Because they're not approved yet. And, th and that's the... Uh, you talk about meeting laws and how and how the, the laws of running meetings and stuff and agendas and all of that. There's a whole process you have to yeah. go through with these public entities. So I want to just add that in there real quick. I, I do have one other quick point. It was okay. brought up that the that the meeting minutes it, it, it looked like they were on us the ACC server. Okay, but uh, Florida State couldn't get access to them, and and Ooh. so it looked there were some questions about the server where the files were held. You know, the judge made a comment, well, they could just email those out or whatever. Um, so, so they still don't have that, those minutes? I don't believe so. Okay, well, that seems kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know how often they meet. They meet quarterly? I don't know what they meet. I, I want to make one, can I make, just because it reminded me, there was a, there was, there was a point about um, the server. Like, okay, so. Yeah, where, I heard him talk about the server. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. and so, okay, where, in, and I think it was as it pertains to, like, where this should be the held. contracts, right? right? Exactly. Talking about the contracts, And yeah. so the ACC was saying, well, this should be, you know, North Carolina is the natural place because the ACC is there yeah. and all the files are held there and, and the administration is run there. Okay. And so the judge asked more about that. Well, okay, well, explain to me what actually happens in North Carolina at the ACC headquarters. So explain to me how the business of the ACC is run there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the, the ACC attorney was like, well, we keep all of our files there on a server <laughs> and like the files are physically kept there on a server. Mm -hmm. And the judge was like, well, yeah, but now, you know, it's, it's, I'm old and I understand you can email files around or anyone can get them from the cloud. Is that really, does that really, what does that pertain? You know, yeah. what does that really mean that the files sure. are kept there? Um, and then the, the, um, so that was kind of a, a kind of a funny moment. And just basically talking about, the difference between North Carolina, you know, saying that it should be in North Carolina because that's where the ACC is. And right. the judge made a point of, well, there's all these different states right. and that there's public schools in these different states in the state of South Carolina and, and um, Pennsylvania and some other states. Um, so he was kind of questioning what takes priority. The right. fact that the, the league office is there in North Carolina or the fact that these public entities are playing games and operating in a bunch of different states, including their own. And the FSU lawyer, um, he made the, he basically made the argument that, uh, um, 
whenever the the contracts were signed, mm-hmm. the ACC commissioner actually flew into the state of Florida and had them sign them in the state of Florida. Uh, okay. So he was basically saying there wasn't business being conducted in North Carolina. It was they were flying to Florida and conducting business there. Okay. Which that was the first time I'd ever heard that. Yes, so I thought that's that, interesting. I don't know if we have that verified, but that's something right. he said. Okay. All right. And I think that's a very valid point. I mean, you're you, you're doing business everywhere. He actually said in his ruling, you know, I, I, my my uh, email fires are probably sitting on a server in Nebraska somewhere. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean I, you know. But anyway, so let's get to it here. It was pretty clear to me through thank thank thankfully you sending me some texts, the little bit that I was able to kind of follow uh, through some other other sources. I thought it was pretty clear that he he wasn't interested in a stay here. I mean, through his questioning and really kind of pounding home to your what you had said before. This whole uh, this forum shopping, uh, the question of forum shopping, and and he would always come back to that's forum shopping. That and I'm like, okay, well, he's saying it's forum shopping. That yeah. <laughs> it's, there's not going to be a stay here, right? Um, so I'll, I'll get into his ruling here a little bit, um, and then I do want to hear um, why you think maybe you know he did the stay before the the dismissal. But anyway, um, he he began to give his opinion here. And he just started, he had his binder, and he was flipping through papers. I, actually, I could actually watch it. Uh, he, was, he was listing a bunch of cases here throughout the U.S., not just in Florida. Right. I mean, it was all over the place in the United States regarding anticipatory lawsuits. Yeah. He made a note uh, that most of the cases he was referencing were patent law yeah. cases. He, he was clear that he's like, if you can find other ones for me, sounds like he must have done this a lot. Yes. If you can find some other stuff, yep. give it to me. But what I'm finding is mostly patent cases. He stated that... Uh, as he read the affidavits that were prepared by the ACC, he found uh, in the AC, uh, North Carolina lawsuit to be anticipatory and forum shopping. To him, that meant the presumption of priority, jurisdiction, or a stay should be extinguished. And I wrote that down. Those were his words ex- exactly. Uh, they, they should all be extinguished. He later made a comment that forum shopping is condemned and that all anticipatory lawsuits are a form of forum shopping. He also stated that he finds this litigation to be material and also that he finds a question of whether the ACC suit was authorized. If it was not authorized, then again, priority should not be granted as that is an evidence of forum shopping. Why didn't you get this authority per your bylaws? Because you you didn't have time to. You had to get it out there. I, I, I thought, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't hear any of your stuff, but I heard this. And he made a heck of a lot of sense for me with this whole forum shopping stuff. Um, he did not come to the conclusion uh, in terms of sovereign ident- on sovereign uh, immunity. I'm sorry, not identity. Sovereign immunity. Um, and if FSU can uh, be sued in another state. So I think maybe we'll hear more about that uh, on the 22nd as he gets into that in, into more detail. But I will say... When he started talking about this forum shopping, almost like I don't, I, I wondered if he repeated himself many times. Right. Yes, because he would he would make a point and say that's forum shopping, mm-hmm. up, 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 that's forum shopping, and I'm like, yeah, he's right, yeah, he's right, yeah, he's right, and um, it didn't take me long to be like, yeah, he he's he's nailing it here. Um, he also questions the taking of property. To your point, in this case, obviously that's the media rights, um, taking them out of the state of Florida, from the state of Florida. Um, So again, he's focused on, as you said, that these are state of Florida property, AKA media rights, not just FSU's media rights. They're they're owned by the state of Florida. He stated that there is an interest in the state regarding this property and if it can be taken. I know I questioned to you, um, and and we don't have to get into this now because I know we're getting long as it is, but how does the taking of property with consideration, how does that play? Um, and maybe he'll get into that as, as he gets into some more of his uh, opinion. Um, he, then, he then also questions uh, what are public records and what are not public records. Again, you said they had a lot of talk about that. Yes. He says there is an issue with the ESPN agreements and questions if they are public records under Florida law. He stated that there is a noticeable difference between the North Carolina laws and the Florida laws regarding this. Um, something I think we, we've already known. Um, the sunniest of sunshine laws are in, in Florida. Um, and then the last thing he really brings up, Steve, here, it was mediation. The kind of last thing that he said before they were done for the day was, and he quoted, 
I am a fan of mediation, and he will order mediation once he gets through all of his, his orders. But he gets back to the settlement, gets back to maybe some of the questions and why did he bring them up. He wants them to get into mediation, and clearly he wants them to, like like any judge would. Yeah. They don't want to hear the case. Right. They don't want to rule on a case. They want to help you get to a settlement. Right. Um, and that's where he kind of ended this. Um, and, and I'll just say my opinion on this. Some massive differences, as we said in the very beginning, from the North Carolina judge. And the two main differences here, Steve, are, are priority and forum shopping, right? So, and, and I'm not saying one judge is wrong and one judge is right. I don't. Th I think they're both right. I honestly think they're both right. They're just looking at them through two different lenses. Yep. The North Carolina judge, um, he said, hey, there was a, a, an imminent lawsuit. That's why you could take action when you did. Well, he's right. I mean, we we think he was right. He obviously thinks he was right. And he was right. But the Florida judge is saying, okay, you did that. But you rushed. You forum there. shopped yeah. to get there. He's also right. They yeah. did rush. Right. Anybody that says they didn't rush and they weren't forum shopping is not being truthful. They absolutely were forum shopping. But the North Carolina judge wasn't answering a question of forum shopping. He was answering a question of, can they bring a suit in North Carolina because a lawsuit was imminent? And the definitions that we talked about on that, I'm not going to go back and redo that whole uh, episode, but he laid out why you can bring a lawsuit and they hit all three marks in North Carolina, why they can bring a lawsuit. So they're, they're both right here. They're just, they're, they have to meet two different definitions, right? I mean, that's where I'm at on this. Yeah, and it's, I would say the North Carolina judge, it seemed like he wasn't nearly as concerned about the, the, the prospect of forum shopping because he stated that in his opinion, the natural place, yes. the natural plaintiff was the ACC, right. which is located in North Carolina. Um, so that is the natural forum. So it didn't matter to him what order they went in because it's the natural forum already. He, he did state um, towards the end of that hearing that he did not deem this to be a rush to the courthouse. Though. He did. You're right. Uh, Judge You're right. Bledsoe actually said, I don't deem this to be a... And that part, I will say, I didn't say it on the on the episode, but I was like, ooh. Well, I don't disagree with his ruling on whether or not they can have a lawsuit yeah. in North Carolina. Uh, mm, the timing of it, you it know, was obvious. The, the day yeah. before, I, yeah. that that one was, was and, kind of and it's And it's interesting that two judges can can even, yes, there's obviously different laws and different precedents in each state, yeah. but they can have t two totally different perspectives on the For matter sure. of forum shopping. Absolutely. Just just like an appeals court can have a different yep. opinion than the, the ruling, the initial ruling judge. Any comments on, and then we'll wrap this up, any comments on the reason he did the stay first? Okay. So I have a comment on that, okay. I, and I have a comment on mediation, and then I okay. just have one final comment. And then okay. I'll oh, great. To you. Um, so first of all, I think the reason that he uh, he ruled on the stay first was basically, and he, and he talked about it kind of throughout and leading up to his decision, is okay. his main thing was that the state of Florida had an interest in, um, you know, in the, because it's, it's Florida public property value yes. to the taxpayers. So the state of Florida had an interest in it. Um, so he thought it should at least be heard. Now, what he said was, I'm not, and he said this pretty plainly, I'm not ruling in necessarily saying that Florida State is right in their arguments. Right. He said that I'm end. just saying yeah. that it's def there's an interest in the state yes. of Florida, and so it should be he heard here first. Uh, we should at least move forward. Did he uh, say first? Maybe he didn't say just, he just heard. Just heard. Just heard. Okay. Yeah. Heard. He basically said, and he said a couple times, he really didn't care what was going on in North yes. Carolina. That sure. wasn't going to affect his one way or the other. So okay. not he did not say first. He okay. just said that because the state has an interest, it should be heard here. Okay. Um, and so that, that was, and, and then also, uh, you know, with the, with the forum shopping, I think, you yes. know, the, he didn't want to just say, okay, well, North Carolina, they, the, you know, ACC filed first, so it should be in North Carolina. Okay. The dismissal, the motion to dismiss, I think he wants to get further into that question of sovereign immunity. Okay. You know, um, and so I think that's why he held off longer on that gotcha. motion to dismiss. Okay. So that's my answer on that. The uh, As far as the mediation. Yeah. Now, like you said, all judges, they, they would love these to be settled out of court. Yes. You know, go to mediation, whatever, some kind of settlement. And when we were covering the PAC... You know, Judge Levy kept saying, like, hey, you guys might want to just go ahead and settle this because one of you is going to be real unhappy. Maybe both of you are going to be unhappy, my yeah, ruling. Really. Right. But he was basically kind of just encouraging them. Okay. Uh, Judge Cooper 
kept bringing up mediation throughout the entire process, okay. and it really almost seemed like he was trying to not just suggest mediation to them, kind of set the table. Like, well, hey, you're here. You're here. You know, I used to do mediation. I was just going to say, I can, like he was starting the mediation Yes, process. like, I can help you kind of get, you know, started and at least mm-hmm. get your starting points. Okay. Uh, so I would say, you know, he was maybe a little more forceful with that. Um, not, not even forceful, but trying to be helpful to yeah. get them to mediation. yeah. yeah. Um, and then my last point is just overall, I'm not at all surprised by this. I yeah. know some of our viewers, they watch one video and watch the, in, the, another video. And, they, and the, if you look at what we've said in the context since this very started, since, it, since the very beginning of these lawsuits, uh, I think I've been pretty clear that I thought there was a very good chance that we would have a dueling, mm-hmm. dueling cases, one in North Carolina, one in Florida. Um, and, you know, we talked about in the North Carolina case, the North Carolina precedent and, and those laws in North Carolina and the, the decisions in North Carolina that have been made and upheld by appeals courts and by their Supreme Court. And we said, you know, Florida has different laws mm-hmm. and different perspectives and different um, precedents, different cases. Um, and it's very possible that the judge in Florida would see things totally different. Yeah. And that's obviously what happened here. And, yeah. and, you know, I go back to that, this being a public entity in Florida, For sure. that sovereign immunity, you know, we can argue and parse words of all courts and this and that, yeah. but really it comes down to the basic principle of this is a public university. These are public taxpayer funds. Right. Um, you know, this, it's very obvious that the state of Florida has an interest in this, um, yeah. So, anyways, I, I just was not surprised by this at all. At the end of our North Carolina video, I said, okay, ACC is is out to a 1-0 lead. Right. Which, and it was. That was a huge win for them. It was. If, if, if the North Carolina judge would have bumped this to Florida, you, you can see, obviously, Florida State has a major advantage in this state. Uh, this is a big win for Florida State. Sure. And having this dueling wins uh, or dueling trials is probably kind of a tie, kind of a toss up. Yeah. Uh, it may go end up going to federal court, or both of us probably think it'll be settled beforehand. Yeah. But I'm just not surprised by this at all. Uh, the the strength of the Florida um, uh, public records laws, public meeting laws, and we've had fun with that. Oh, yeah. Florida has sunshine laws. We know that, guys. You guys don't have to tell us the, the state of Florida has sunshine laws. Yeah. We know that. We've had some fun with that. Yeah. But it's not just their laws that they have because the, the laws in other states are very similar in, in many ways. But it's the precedent in Florida of how they have been ruled on and used and enforced, uh, which is just a completely different situation than North Carolina. So I'm not surprised that it looks like at this point we're going to have dueling court cases. It's the it's the case law backing up the statute law. Yes, right? yes. Um, so yeah, and and I want to just mention real quick, we had a commenter on our one of our last episodes, Terry, that brought up this whole conflicts of laws mm-hmm. issue that we are 100% now into. Uh, Terry always gives us fantastic uh, comments on this. If you guys want to go check that out, it's one of our just our Terry's more, great. Yeah, one of our more recent uh, episodes where he, he lays that out briefly, but we're, we're in it deep, and I think we're going to be talking more about that. We are also working on a, a uh, special guest, hopefully, that we're going to be able to get on here in the next week or two. I think our FSU fans will most likely know him um, maybe pretty well. I don't know, but we're trying to trying to work on getting a third party in here to to correct any mistakes that we're making, Steve. The last thing I want to say is FSU did appeal the decision in North Carolina. Woo, surprise, surprise, not at all. That goes to the North Carolina Supreme Court now. I'm, what, 99, 100% sure the same issue is probably going to happen here in Florida once we get through all of the ruling and conclusions to this case. But we'll be doing another episode after the 22nd hearing. We might do a deeper dive on this. I feel like we did a pretty good job. You know, as I go back and I'm able to watch some of it, if there's certain things that stick out, maybe we'll we'll do another one on this guy. Um, but certainly we'll be, we'll be waiting for the 22nd again as well. So, hey, with that, we thank you guys for watching. Make sure you give this one a like. Subscribe if you like our content. We'll see you next time on The Big Mountain. It's a massive win for Florida State, but we're tied 1-1 going to the second inning.